something that you know I, I've been participating and collaborating with these groups from Latin America. Uh, this this group started uh, studying about the Jean Pierre Mallet Garnier theory, mm -hmm. and they they you know they develop uh, this lady from Argentina, Alejandra Casal. Uh, she develop uh, uh, like she goes deeper. But well, this is the main interest of these trainings to demonstrate the applications of a scientific theory that allows everyone to find balance within themselves without knowing anything about equations. This is the goal. So, how would you describe your theory to someone who does not understand the scientific language? It is a simple matter of explaining why there is a doubling of time, which means that I have available two different times simultaneously. A very short time in which I have no time to do anything, a zero time that I'm not aware of, and that it simultaneously I can have a different time that is excessively long during that short time. Herein lies the difficulty in understanding. In the short time, I don't have time to do anything. And in the very long time, I have time to do many things. Which means that if I'm present in the two different times, I can do many things. And yet, in my time, I have no time to know that I'm doing many things. So I don't have the sensation that I'm doing many things. Because for me, that time does not exist. So how is that possible, would you say, to think that there is a time in which I'm not aware of it, but not perceiving that time, I have the sensation that it doesn't exist, and yet, the fact that it exists is, means that I have the time to do many, many things which change my memory in an instantaneous way, and it brings me desires, new thoughts, that seem to come out of nowhere. And this is the way in which a scientific theory allows finally to explain the instinct, the intuition, to explain anticipation, to explain premonitions, all those things that are very mysterious. Many things have been invented to explain the mysterious, and it is yet very simple. In order to live, you have to be able to anticipate everything that is to come. A particle does the same thing, and this is something that we already know. You take two doubled particles, and while one of them does many things, the other one does nothing. And the one that does many things alters the memory of the one that does nothing. And there is an exchange of information that is instantaneous between those particles that exist in two different times. Those particles that exist in two different times are going to experience the most classic things and they're going to be able to see when and how each one of them acts upon the other. The most important example is the black hole, because a particle that arrives at the edge of a black hole doubles itself, and one of them enters the black hole and instantaneously disappears. The particularity of a black hole is that if someone enters into it, it instantaneously disappears. If I am the observer that is within the black hole, what I see is that the one that is trying to enter has a hard time trying to do so, which means that on one side he is instantaneously disintegrated in the black hole, while from the other side it takes a hard work to actually do so. So we see perfectly that there are two different times, and that relativity of time, what good is it for? The particle that disappears into the black hole takes all of its time in order to realize many experiences, makes many new things that enrich its memory, while the other one that is at the edge of the black hole keeps its memory intact, which means that the particle that comes out of the black hole again in the same rapid way in which it entered 
We don't have the sensation that it is coming out. We have the sensation that it is a new particle that is there at the edge of the black hole and that makes a union with its other particle. In fact, it is the doubled particle that re-encounters itself with its celibate particle, that comes to unite with the celibate particle that it was before. There is, though, an exchange of memory instantaneously for the particle that remained at the edge. It did not make any new new experience by why the particle that is in the black hole can change its memory simply through an exchange of information. You see then that this principle is something that is totally known scientifically. We don't know and we don't see what use it can have for us, which is very surprising. And yet, that's what the particles do. And we that are nothing but a set of particles do not take advantage of this. Very interesting, very interesting because very easily and very fast it goes to ethics, you know, like immediately, you know, they go there. And it's funny because they also, you know, like think a lot about, they, they you know, they, they discuss about timing and and they an make analysis of information in the media, in leathering, in the streets, everywhere. You know, like they are taking like lectures from everything and they have this system to analyze it. You know, some kind of logic. I, I didn't learn it, to be honest. But it's very interesting. But what I notice is that it always you know you can it's like music you know you can you can make uh always like put more more um figures in into yeah. into one single box you know it's it's endless yeah, so so you, you, you so, so you get lost in some point in so many cables you know <laughs> because yeah. everything is connected and everything everything is you know like it's too much yeah. so you get lost again you know like yeah. when when you started to you know like they 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 probably you know analyze the the movements of the biggest you know the planets and stars and uh -huh. everything and they started to put it on on different scales and you know you get yeah, some yeah. point that yeah, it's too much. Uh, <laughs> you can yeah. get crazy there. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. You could um, mistake the, the figure for the ground or and, and uh, the map for for the territory. Get, and, and also get into a loop and, and don't don't be able well, to to you know, manifest. That, that's, why like, I, like, that's why I like a, um, Zen Buddhist or and or Taoists like um like philosophy and, and like parables because they're always like um like about that like okay like you know there's like two ways to reach enlightenment and you know it's either like the zen lunatic way or you know following the strict uh diamond uh rule or whatever if <laughs> you get towards the end and it's it's either like you know they slap you in the face and you know what is the sound of enlightenment or whatever and it, like, it, it comes down to just like being present like it, like all those are like tricks to like getting you getting you into um what what is already uh should should spur out like organically you know without any yeah without any um yeah you know it's like when when you're jamming you know like you have the tempo you 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 feel in it, you go yeah. with it, but in some point you you need to be able to flow yeah. in in the middle yeah. of it, you know, like then you don't count it anymore. You just yeah. do whatever you want. You, and, and, you know, uh, when, yeah. when we were doing open mic night on, on Minds that one time uh, for that moment, and then we, we started to call like what we were doing uh, double dutch and like to say like you know like there's like a little rhythm and then like once we get into that rhythm then we jump in and then like you could start to like do different like your own moves or whatever you know what i mean <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, yeah, but yeah, we yeah. all we always had kind of like a, a, a open that like got us into like okay one of us had to like prepare how to open right and so we'll come out and, and we'll kind of like give it to each other say hey this is how i'm going to start so like you kind of 
have, uh, you know, like that the, the tone gets set, and then and then it, it's kind of like always, and then okay, we're gonna end with this person, but then like in between there, it could be anything, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, and I think that's what we're getting to too with the um, reading that the mandala book, right? It's about finding yeah. your your uh, your axis and like your your center point. You know, finding what you were saying, um, finding your compass and like some coherency to to navigate like the endless possibilities. Yeah, yeah, I learned a lot about about that in exercise with Robert because you know he the, this guy creates these landscapes, you know, sound la- landscapes, okay. and it's. Uh, by inertia, you know, is is not planning at all, but but you realize that at some point you can make whatever, and you put some tempo on it, and it will fit, you know, like always. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you put in it, you know, like <laughs> it always get in or and and, and makes sense at the end. You know, it's like unexpected, but but and and you you don't have control of it. That's the part. Well, that's my favorite part. You know, when you lose control and, and magically it fits. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like when when you you know I, I'm I'm doing like like uh, it happens with loops with delays. Oh, okay. You know, you're yeah. you're playing out with delays and you create these whatever and then you you put a rhythm on it and it fits automatically it doesn't matter what what you what you do you can do whatever you want and it will fit and then you can put another uh, random thing on it and it, it will fit also don't you <laughs> find though that eventually the fit is is going to become familiar or something and and then yeah. it, it's not it's not what you're looking for anymore and it you start to get interested in how it changes and that yeah. that little wiggle that creeps in um that that's what i find anyway i'm, I'm a much more amateur musician so for me like i, I hear what you're saying and about that that same experience like the few times i've written the songs um Mm -hmm. being able to hear like the music part and then the vocal part and then different parts of the song it's like you're hearing the same thing from different angles but also there's always this element with me if i try this out what happens what what's or I, I try to play something in my head and it's it reflects something really different back to me and I need to go decide something else to chase now. Kind of that you, drunkard's walk of improvisation again, I guess. Yeah, what you mean when, when, when you're uh, making some, some tune or you're creating something? Yeah. In that, yeah, in that moment, and how how you ap- approach in the uh, the possibilities. Yeah, and yeah. I just kind of shoot my shot, and my incompetence becomes my muse. But <laughs> I was even saying that you could be the best person ever with playing loops and all, but unless you allow yourself like room to be surprised by the unexpected oh yeah you'll get Mm -hmm. bored definitely definitely because you know in some point you let's say you you crack the music you find find out that it's all a fractal and it's it iterations of the same in uh uh infinitum so it could be easy to get bored (laughs) <laughs> you know like yeah I could do but when 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 we explore these other you know possibilities when it gets out of our control it gets alive again you know it's not only theory it gets like 
real, <laughs> you know, like it's happening. <laughs> yeah, that's why it, why it's so cool to work with other people, you know, because you you don't you, it's you don't know what to expect, <laughs> and, and and it's it's great. It's what makes it magical. That that other call we had where it, it cut me off saying just let let your word be, which is not the actual quote from Four Agreements, but it wound up better that way anyway. Yeah. And and now I I changed it instead to let the word breathe or the word must breathe. Yeah. Like we have to have that negative space and forget what we think we know. 